10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. chats in this episode to my left you may see that there is somebody sitting there um he is uh he's been in the industry for over 20 years he was a star maker finalist in 1997 and again in 1998 he has recently come back to country music i'm talking about none other than jamie Lindsay. and today dax chats to Jamie Lindsay. G'day, hey, mate. How are, How are you, man? Thanks for having me on your I'm show, doing, dude. I'm, I'm doing all right. Yeah. Um, hey, look, you've been in the industry for a long time. Obviously, 1997, uh, 1998, Star Maker finalist. What was that process like? Because a lot of people don't know what it is like to go through that process. Um, well, back in the 90s, it was, you know, um, it was very exciting for me like star maker was the biggest thing you know in tamworth it was it was the ultimate thing and to get to the top 10 was you know a, such a huge achievement for me i think i, I was about 18 in 97 mm. and then 19 in 98 um mm. in 98 i also went to the country music college which was just so amazing in my year i had um jad hughes brooke mcclymont um, Adam Exley, you know, so I got to meet those people before they were even superstars themselves, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but um, Star Maker is is such an amazing experience, you know. You you really get treated um, so well, um, mm. and I'm I'm sure it's the same now as it was back in the late nineties. Um, it was also mm. a bit of a different vibe back then. Um, the new age country wasn't that accepted in Tamworth mm. back in the late nineties. It was still quite traditional. It was still, um, you know, old school, which was cool. And I think I was doing more of the modern thing. I was right into Garth Brooks and Travis mm. Tritt and all that mm. kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Um, you're my, you're my, you're, read... my, you're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, um, I also love Troy Casadale and, and I, and I loved Lee. Look, I grew up in Launceston, um, so I grew up very country. I grew up on a farm. My uncles are shearers, you know, um, very blue collar. Um, and so, you know, um, in my family, I grew up with Slim Dusty, Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, um, Johnny Cash. Elvis Presley was, was a, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. favourite. But, yep. Um, yep. look, you know, and, and then for me, I was only, you know, 18 or 19, I was still really exploring my musical journey. And once I moved over to the mainland in about 2000, mm -hmm. I met up with a couple of other guys. They were doing rock. So I went mm -hmm. over to the dark side for about 15 I was, years. <laughs> I was going to say, you've uh, been on a, a journey uh, outside of country for a long time. I have. I have. Very mm -hmm. long time. And I think, um, but it's funny because I never stopped writing country music. I just never had a vehicle to drive it um mm. so i've got i've got a lot of country songs you know I've, I've i've always loved country music i love the storytelling and i love the songs about the land and mm. you know like the struggle i think i think the best thing about country music is its honesty it is yep. um and and like with with rock and pop that they're, they're always trying to reinvent the wheel Right. Mm. With country, mm. you don't need to reinvent the will. Um, the will. You just need to be honest and true to yourself, and and mm. be true to your audience because that's who you're trying to connect to. You know, you don't mm. need the glamour and the and the whole shamiz of the pop thing. You just need to be real, and that's what country mm. music is. It is true. Very true. Um, so. Uh... So you've worked with amazing people. You know, you've worked with people from In Excess, ACDC, yep. The Easy Beats, uh -huh. uh, 
uh-huh. uh, people that have people that have worked with destiny's child john legend yes. celine dion yes. yeah you've had you've had an amazing journey yeah. through pop blues and hard rock uh, over your 20 years um and uh, now you've decided to come back to your roots with your new album that was just released today uh, love it. uh called 11 tell us yeah. about the, the journey of this album i think it was around about 2016 and i've been I was kind of in the background. I wasn't really kind of pushing myself as an artist. I had a rock band that dissolved and I was writing for other people and I just wasn't sure what I was doing. I had a couple of little solo singer songwriter kind of EPs and I was like, man, like, like I, I should have, I should have never left country. It's always been such a big part of my heart. And I was just thinking to myself, you know what? It's time for me to get back to where it all began for me. Um, mm. and so I started writing with an idea that I was going to release an album. Um, and so, you know, these, I think I wrote about 17 or 18 songs and then I called them down to about 11. Mm-hmm. 11 has been a really, um, recurring number for me in my life. It's, it's kind of been my lucky number. And, mm-hmm. um, when I, when I finally got all the tracks together that I was really happy with, I was like one, two, three, four. And I was like, oh, there's there's 11 um, 11 oh, tracks <laughs> there's 11 tracks let's just call the album 11 and then um we decided to be really cool to release it on the 11th of of something you know so it just happened to be september so, 11th so why did you choose september 11 because obviously that has a, a, a big impact across the world uh, as a date in itself yeah absolutely no relation whatsoever and i would like mm. to think that as tragic as that day was um, back then, I feel mm. we need to move forward from that. You know, yes, there's correct. been tragic yeah. dates throughout the whole um, year, mm. you know, um, mm. to single out that one. I mean, you know, that was a, a very tragic day for America, um, mm. but we need to move forward from that. They don't own mm. the date. Um, <laughs> no. It's a very special <laughs> date for me. And I just yep. went with it and I moved forward from it. So you're actually the first person to ask me about that and to see if there was any um, relationship to it, zero relationship. I, I thought about it for a second. I went, you know what? You've got to move forward. Yep. You've yep. got to move I... forward. And that was a thing of the past and I'm looking to the future. Excellent. Excellent. Good answer. I, cause I agree. I mean, I think, you know, it's been a, a long time since that's happened and yep. we don't need to hold on to that memory. We don't. Um, mm. and, and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things in history that, that have that same day. Like my wife is born on the 11th of the 11th, right? Which is oh, obviously my brother's born on the uh, 11th of the 11th. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, so that's obviously, remembrance day which is mm-hmm. which is you know something that that we always need to acknowledge however on that day i celebrate my wife's birthday yep yep, yep. you know that's her date and she owns yep. it you know yep. so <laughs> you know that's and 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 um that's how i feel about those things the albums is is a bit of a mixed bag um, when mm. I was trying to gather songs for it, I wanted a little bit of something for everyone. Um, there's a bit mm-hmm. of rockier stuff on it. There's some poppier stuff on it. There's some more traditional yep. country on there. It's a real mm-hmm. mixed bag of goodies. It's a $2 mixed bag of lollies, you know? So mm. hopefully there's something on there that can actually connect with at least one person. That's right. Now I'm just trying to pick the uh, album up because I just had it here before I was looking at it. Um, oh, cool. Oh yeah, I've been. I, I was actually listening to it. Um, oh cool, even better. <laughs> <laughs> I I was listening to it. Now where did it go? <laughs> I can see your screen has lit your face up. Yeah, I know because I ke- I keep changing. I, I'm on two screens. I I I, I, don't, I hate that situation, but I, that's the way it is. I can't find it now. There was a there was a there was a track that I really liked. Um, Cool. The, That's good to hear. The, <laughs> let's talk about the single. I know we have the single here somewhere. <laughs> so there's a couple of singles that 
that I've released off it, but I think we went with Sirius um, to launch the album. Yep. Sirius is a very, um, oh, it's a very close song to my heart, um, and mm. I, I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure if I wanted to run with that as the single off the album because it is, out of all the tracks on on the album, it's it's the one that really um, hits a nerve with me. Um, mm-hmm. The songs about the loss of my German shepherd that I had to put down um, a few years mm. ago. His mm. name was Sirius and he, and uh, which is named after like the dog star. And um, mm. it's, it's all about the day that I actually had to put him down. It's all about the day when the vet came around, gave him the injection and I'm holding on to him and like I'm bawling and, mm. Mm. Oh man, like it's, wow. it's, it's, it's still, it's still just, it's still raw. It's still raw. Yeah. And, um, when I play that song live, I even, I don't know, it's just, it's, yeah, it's raw. It's raw. So yeah. um, I, I can but, still look, see that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can interpret the song. If you, it, look, if you didn't know that it was about my dog, you could in, interpret it as just a loss of love of a yep. loved one. Yep. The fact mm. that it is about my dog, Makes it a pretty good country song, <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> um, but it's real, Dax. Mm. You know, it's it's yeah. a it's it's a real raw emotion. And for me, I think writing the song was just a part of the healing process. And I'm 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 wrapped that it turned out well enough to make the album. But for me, mm. it was really just about spewing up my emotions and and getting, you know, these these emotions that I had into lyrics just to help me heal with the process because it's you know it's a it's a terrible thing you know it's like losing a family member it was it's that hard you yeah. know yeah. it's really yeah, hard for sure. so for sure. anyone out there that have that have you know had to put down their the family pet it's you know i'm sure you understand i look i i, I was my I do understand putting down a family pet or losing a family pet, you know, a pet running away or you know, there have mm. been many of them. Um, my interesting story with, with a pet is um, we got ourselves a, a little, um, um, one of the ones the Queen have. Um, <laughs> what, what are they called? Corgi. Corgi. We got ourselves a little Corgi. beside me. He can... He can he can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got ourselves a little corgi um, from a from a dog breeder um, right. and uh, here here in China, and these breeding farms they they're just they're just full of disease, and I didn't realise sure. that. Um, and um, so we bought this little pup home, and um, it just started getting really sick. It just started getting really, really, really sick. And I think it had some sort of parvo virus or something like that. And it was so bad that it was just about on death's door and it looked like it was – and I sort of I sort of gave up on it, you know. My wife would not give up. Wow. She took it to the vet. She took it, you know, it went through – immense uh like it must have been two three months of treatments you know just to try and get it back to some sort of normal uh, i my wife spent thousands of dollars and you know just kept pouring money into what i thought was a lost cause because it, yeah. it was just yeah. on on death's door she bought it back i'll tell you what wow. <laughs> yeah amazing she was just full on committed to bringing this dog back. She just had so much love for this animal. So when you lose an animal, I can, I can, um, I can feel your pain because yeah. I saw my wife's love for this animal and yeah. trying to bring it back to life. Mm. Yeah. Incredible, man. Yeah. Look, it's a powerful thing. And um, yeah, it's a powerful song for me anyway, you know, so yeah, it, for, it, it, for it, sure. Um, and look, you know, there's, there's, the, out of all the tracks on the record, that's definitely the one that's closest. And so, you know, when we were deciding um, which ones to go with, I just thought, you know what, let's just go for the juggler. Let's just, um, <laughs> let's, yeah. you know, let's talk about the most heartfelt song on the record that there could possibly be. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah. Because at least, at least, you know, it's, 
it's where it's at for me, man. You know, I write mm -hmm. songs that are about things in my life, about things that actually have happened. I'm not, you know, I don't have songwriters in Nashville writing songs for me that know nothing yeah. about me. You know, I yeah. write yep. my own songs and I'm proud yep. of that. And I don't want Absolutely. to sound like, I don't want to sound like what's coming out of Nashville. You know, I don't, mm. I want to have my own stamp on things and I just want, to build my own fan base. I don't care about trends. I don't care about any of that stuff. I mm -hmm. just want to be true to my own music. And and if if I can get one person connected to my songs, then that's success for me, Dax, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. So another single that we want to talk about is uh, Start Again. Talk to us. Yeah. Talk me through Start Again. Start Again. Um, uh, I was... <clears throat> Start Again was actually another song. And I was signed to an American publishing label um, in 2016, 2017. And I was writing songs for them and I was doing stuff for them. And mm. I wrote this song called Smell the Roses. Mm. And I sent it to my publisher. And he said, he said, I love the music. Um, the lyrics are a bit corny. And I think you can do better. And I mm -hmm. reckon you should start again. Mm. And I went, okay, that's cool. Yep, yep. I, you know, I respect that. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I, um, I'd already recorded the music, and I scrubbed the vocal. I had a blank piece of paper. I wrote up the very top, start again. That was my working title. Start again. I'm starting again. Mm. And then mm -hmm. I literally just envisioned someone that had maybe a you know, walk down the wrong road, maybe been in prison or whatever, but, you know, wants to turn his or her life around um, mm. and seek some kind of redemption. It's got a mm. very gospel feel. So, you know, to me, the lyrics and the feel of the song just really marry up quite nicely. But, yeah, it's about hope. It's about humans making mistakes and turning their life around. And that's what Start mm. Again is all about. And I feel that... No matter what point in your life you can you can do that. You've got the choice to do that. You can just go. You know what? Correct. I'm I'm sick of this. I'm I've had enough. I'm gonna stop walking down this road and I'm gonna start walking down a new road. Mm. And that's what correct. The song's about. And <clears throat> well, I mean, for me, I've done it many times as, as 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 a musician as a, as a as a radio show host as a radio show, as a radio station operator all of this that i do now this was all st started again um <laughs> because of the, the title. because of the yeah, because of the pandemic, uh, yeah. I, you know, it was like I'm sitting at home thinking, what can I do? You know, like, yeah. so I went back to what I know. I like, so we started a radio station. We started doing these interviews. We've done over over 60 interviews now um, since wow. uh, since the beginning of July, um, yeah. and the radio and the radio station started at the uh, on my birthday actually on the 26th oh. of March. Yeah, because oh, we're all yeah. we're all in lockdown going what the hell do i do and i guess yeah. and i guess listening to your song the other way of looking at it is it's you um starting again because you've been in the country environment then you've gone out and done your rock pop blues what have you and yeah. hey I'm, I'm i'm going back to my roots i'm going to start again i'm going to go back to yeah. country absolutely mm. and it feels like home dax it actually feels like home um and it felt mm. like home back in the 90s and let me tell you it just, it just, it's me all over. Like I should yeah. never have left country music. Um, I'm kicking myself, but you know, that's the journey that I chose. And, and, you know, mm. uh, that's the choices that I made at the time. And so, but anyway, I, I am, I am starting again. I'm walking down a whole new road and it just feels so good. It just feels, feels like where I should be in my life. And I'm, I'm, I'm 43 I've got the whole next album, um, mm -hmm. you know, planned, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere, mate. People are going to hear Jamie Lindsay for the next 50 years, let me tell you. Oh, absolutely. We'll be right behind you, I tell you. Thanks, Country Dax. Done that the sounds network. awesome, mate. We'll be behind it. you. No worries. Thanks, mate. Um, look, I know 
in Australia, we've, you, you, obviously, there's been some mass problems that have happened, you know, since September last year. Obviously, we had the huge bushfires oh, in, in, yeah. in Australia, which yeah. were, were the worst in Australia's history. Then just just after that, you had mass floodings um, and, and then COVID hit. Um, it's been a whirlwind of, of, a, of a year, 2021. Um, yeah. Melbourne's now in, obviously in the second lockdown, um, which is tougher than the first. And uh, the, uh, the, the wave was much, much bigger. <laughs> um, how have you been coping with this whole new world that we're living in? Same as you, Same readjusting. As you readjusting mm. and trying to do whatever we can to keep the money coming in, keep this, you know, keep food on the table, just whatever we can. You know, mm. we've all just had to readjust. Um, there's been some positive sides of it. I mean, I I used to do, you know, a, a lot of shows a week and, you know, I would fill up my time with a lot of studio stuff as well. Being mm. able to have more time at home with my little family has been such a blessing. You know, mm. it's made me realize that I would like to have more of that, you know. Mm. Um, mm. So when when things do start to come back to some kind of normality, which whatever that is, um, mm. yeah, I'd like to kind of balance my time a little bit. So, yeah, look, it's been hard. It's um, mm. definitely the income has has suffered because the arts have been wiped hit. out yeah mm. um but look you just got to keep on fighting we're battlers mm. here mate you know and and you Correct. gotta do you gotta do whatever you can it's the australian way to to keep on fighting and that's what mm. you have to do so don't give up anyone you know like just mm. keep on keep on going man and and if you do have some major issues reach out reach out to someone and talk about it you know um, that's the best advice because there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of people struggling, man, a lot of people struggling and, you know, we, we need to help as much as we can. Yeah. So yesterday was Are You OK Day nationally Correct. in Australia. Um, do you think that there should be more than just this national day where they just yeah. throw this. Cause I mean, all I saw on social media yesterday were people throwing out this, you know, are you okay thing and, and, and getting people to comment. I, I, I think it goes more than that. I mean, mental yeah. health issues are, are something that affect a lot of creatives for starters, you know, like yeah. I suffer from depression. I spoke to somebody yesterday that speak, that suffers from anxiety. Uh, I know another artist the other day that I spoke to suffers from anxiety. There's a whole heap of uh, uh, mental health issues around, you know, we can go all the way back to the 90s when Paul Hester committed suicide. He was suffering, right you know, depression. Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. So, and, and it really, it really is part of the uh, creative's mind space, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but even so, like if you look at, um, you know, when when the drought was happening last year and the fires, there was a lot of farmers committing suicide yes. because they just had no other option and they were giving up. And man, that is that is absolutely heartbreaking, man. Like that mm. is really that's heavy, man. That's really heavy. That is. Know? That is. You have fought. You have fought and fought and fought, and you just feel that. You know, the only way out of this is is to give it all away, and that is, yeah, I totally agree with you, man. It shouldn't just be one day; it should be should be an ongoing thing. You know, um, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure, there's so much pressure, and and mm. whether you put that on yourself or not, who cares? You know, you you need to be able to talk to people and and speak up about it because I mean that's that's the last thing that anyone wants. That's a that's the last thing anyone's family wants to happen to you, right? Yeah, correct. Correct. So, I know, think, and I think, and I, and I think that you and I are around around the same age. So we grew up in the same era where you know people would still talk to each other on the streets. You know, people would yeah. still say hi to you as you're walking down the street. Your friends would come and knock on your door um, and, or you'd go and knock on their door if you wanted to go and see them on the weekends or after yeah. school or, you know, um, that 
stuff doesn't happen anymore. That techno the, the technological age has killed all of that. And, you know, crime rates and people stealing cars out of your driveway and all, you know, and so people are locking themselves in and there's no personalization between people anymore. Um, and that's, that's the scary part. I mean, I think that's where it all stems from before. I mean, when we were in the eighties, we didn't think about mental health issues because everybody had a mate to talk to and everybody, you know, yeah. the mates would knock on your door and stuff like that. But then as society progressed and as technology came in, everybody started closing off from other people. And I think there in itself lies the problem. I think we need to get out and interact with people again. You are absolutely spot on. And I, and Man, I couldn't have said it better than what you just said. I, I agree with you 100%. You know, we we have definitely come from a different age. Um, mm. Things have changed a lot. You're right. You know, we would be out on the street. We'd always have friends. You know, you could always talk to someone. And these days, you know, especially with the kids, you know, they're so locked up in their phones and social media mm. that, you know, they've mm. they've lost so much of that connection, that human connection that is needed. It's needed mm. so much, and correct. I I don't have an answer for you, Dax. I I really don't. I'd like to. I'd like to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We're very lucky to have come from that and experienced that because we still yes. do that. I still call up my mates and I still have a great chat to them. You know, I could be on the phone for mm. three hours sometimes talking about yep. rubbish. You know. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's just <laughs> that's just how I am. That's you know. Yeah. That's. That's just, um, you know, you you got on the phone and you talked to someone. I don't care what time it is either, mate. Like if I've had a yeah. if I've had a few whiskeys and it's eleven o'clock, and if I want to call Steve, I will. I'll call Steve. Yep. You know what I mean? Because yep. I don't care. Because that's that's <laughs> that's how I am, you know. But these yep. days with the kids, you know, yeah, they 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 you know they're so they're hiding behind the phones. It's a shame. It's a real it shame, is. man. Um, it is. I don't have an answer. I, I just hope that it improves for everyone's I think we, sake. And I, I, th I think somehow we have to go back to the that type of interaction that we had. I mean, I think, you know, we should be looking at the the junior sporting stuff that we used to do. You know, I used to I used to play soccer, you know, and I used to play cricket, you know, and I, yeah. you know, like those types of things, uh, your, your little athletics and uh, yeah. even – even even cubs and scouts and girl yeah. girl guides yeah. all of all of those things that that we had back in the eighties that have all just seemed to have disappeared you know like Absolutely. in a in a Lost. big way I, we think we need to bring that type of interaction back mm. so that we can bring back community interaction mm. on personal levels. It's funny you said about the community thing. I live in Edelong, and you know mm. I moved up here from Hornsby. Mm. We just, you know, only like an hour down the road. But the community vibe that I feel here in Edelong and the Central Coast in general is so mm -hmm. different to Sydney. You know, it's yep. it's another Absolutely. world. You know, walking around Hornsby, even though Hornsby's a beautiful place, but no one would say hello to you. You yep. know, yep. you walk down my street and I bet you if there's five people walking up the road, they'll all say, how you doing? Hello. Good day. Yep. Good day. Yep. Absolutely. So Absolutely. And, and so maybe it's the my mum. My mum lives in Tookley. My mum lives ah, in Tookley. So yeah. Tookley. There you go. Love. Absolutely. Love. Love. Love the Central Coast. I've got plenty yep. of friends on the Central Coast, and actually plenty of musician friends on the Central Coast. Yeah. There's so many of you up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an absolute, absolute place to be. Um, it's a mecca, you know. But um. Yep. Yeah, it's such a different vibe from Sydney, and I and I I love it because I've got a young family, and and we're really mm. happy to have moved out of the jungle and and moved mm. up to the coast because the vibe is so good. It's so mm. it reminds me like I drove home the other day and I saw a couple of kids. I reckon they would have been about probably nine, ten. They had fishing rods and they were heading down to the beach. You know, absolutely, and, yeah. And that was the thing that I did about that age. You know, yep. you know, mm. just heading down for a fish at the beach, nine or ten yep. after school, just awesome. Yep. Like I was like, that's what I love about the Central Coast. You don't see that in Sydney, mate. You, you don't you see don't. that in the city. No. 
No. Any so, city. I mean, yeah, it's just gone. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. So yeah. anyway, um, sucks for them. Great to be me. <laughs> Great to be you. <laughs> Mate, it's been fantastic to chat with you. All yeah. the best of luck with the album. It's Thank called you. 11, and you can get it on all your major streaming platforms, or you can go to his website, I'm sure. Uh, what's your website? jamelinsymusic.com. Look, there will be some hard copies available as of next week, so anyone that's into the CDs, which I am, um, there will be some hard copies available as of next week from the website direct, jamielindsaymusic.com. There you go. So there you go. There you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. Now, of course, Jamie Lindsay has some tracks playing on the Country Thunder Network, so you can go and request the songs directly from the player or you can vote for them in the Country Thunder 20. Until next time. Until next time, this is DJ Dax signing out for Dax Chats, and we're proudly supported by Neon Horse in Stanhope, Victoria. Say goodbye, Jamie. See you, Dax. Thanks for having me, bro.